Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I made this gradient style art in Adobe Photoshop and how you can do the same at home. I've included the links to the fonts, the images and everything else I've used in the description so you can follow along. Now the great thing about this process is once you know how to do it, you can apply it to all kinds of different things and all kinds of different colors. So without further ado, let's get started. So create a new file for Adobe Photoshop. I've created it 3000 pixels wide and 3000 pixels high, the resolution at 300. But obviously these dimensions can change if you want to you know, make a fun wallpaper or a desktop wallpaper. The process will be the same, um, but these are the dimensions that I'm using now. So, first step is to unlock our background layer and double click on the layer to bring up the layer styles. And let's go to gradient overlay. We want the blend mode to be normal, the opacity to be 100, the style to be angle, and the angle itself to be 90, and the scale to be 100%. Now the colors that I'm using for my gradient uh, are a green to yellow. Uh, you can try out different colors if you like, but this is the process that I'm using, so these are the colors that I'm gonna to use to start with. So once we have all that in place, we click OK. Uh, and now we right click on the layer, and convert it to a smart object. And what that will do is it will let us add filters and edit those filters without destroying the layer. So if we want to go back and change them, we can totally do that without, without any problem. So the first step is to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what we're looking for here is a, is a nice soft blur that changes this hard green and hard yellow kind of a, a much softer transition. Now we don't want it all the way to the maximum because then that's it's a little too soft for me. We, I still want it to be green and yellow, but I want the dividing line to be a little a little more mudded. So somewhere, maybe somewhere around 200 would be nice. Click OK. And next we'll click on this half circle here to bring up our adjustment layers. Click on gradient map and this is when we can alter the colors a little bit more. So I'm going to choose a purple, I'm going to choose a purple to kind of a pink. Let's go OK, I'm going to click reverse just so the colors are swapped around. Uh, and from the blending style, change it from normal, let's change it to multiply. And what that does is gives us a really nice soft orange here and a soft desaturated sort of dark green here. And so now we have these base colors in place. It's time to see how these colors sort of play with an image. So let's drag an image in. Uh, I'll include in the description the one I used. It's a great portrait that I grabbed from Unsplash. And the great thing about this portrait is that it already has a lot of really nice colors in it. So this kind of darker blue to the lighter blue, the skin colors and kind of the way the light is playing with it. That means all the colors here will mix really nicely with all the colors here and we should have some cool effects. So let's change our blending mode to color dodge and let's right click on the image and again convert this one to a smart object. So all the effects we're doing we can edit later just the same as we did with our green and yellow gradient. So. While it's set to color dodge, let's go to filter, blur, motion blur, the angle at zero. And here is sort of a matter of personal preference. I'm just gonna play around with the slider until I get something that I like. Um, now I don't wanna go again all the way to the end because I want something that's still recognizable as a human face and still has some of the detail, but uh, it's kind of nicely blurred out to give a cool aesthetic feel. So it's this somewhere around five, this is 534, somewhere around 500 would be quite nice. Let's click OK. But again, the good thing about having a smart object is that if in a few minutes I decide I don't like that blur, I can just double click where it says motion blur, and I can change that again to something smaller or something much worse. But let's put it back to what I had before, which is 534. So let's create a new layer here and go to edit, fill, and the contents are 50% gray, mode normal and opacity 100. 
click OK. And let's go filter, noise, add noise. Uh, and I'm going somewhere around 35 here, Gaussian and monochromatic. Obviously, if you have a bigger image and you're working on a bigger canvas, then you're going to want more noise. And again, if it's a smaller canvas, uh, smaller noise. And just click OK. And let's go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just go one for this. And what this does is change the noise from this very kind of harsh um, and sort of pixelated black and white to a much softer uh, gray, which I think tends to work better for the whole aesthetic that we're going for. So let's change this blending mode to soft light. Uh, and let's bring that opacity down to about just under 50%. And what that does is it gives us a really nice soft noise um, without being top two overpowering. So we have this in place and this is the basic effect. Let's see how we can go about adding some nice text like this. So create a new layer, T, uh, and the text that I'm using here uh, is a font called Ammonite. Um, I'll link that in the description below. It's a great font, um, perfect for these kind of aesthetic images. It's kind of a nice display font. So let's change the font. So I change the text to something we like. And let's resize it so it fills the canvas a bit more. Okay, so now we have this in place, we can start playing around with it. One thing to note is that whatever we're doing with our text or our images, we always want to make sure that our noise layer is on the top. So the noise layer is affecting everything below it. And if we had our image above the noise, then the noise wouldn't be affecting it in the same way. The same as if we had the text on the top layer, the text wouldn't be affecting, wouldn't be affected by the noise in the same way. So that's something to remember, always keep our noise on the top layer. So now we have our text in place. Let's right click that and convert it to a smart object like we've done with everything else so far. And let's go to filter, blur gallery and field blur. Now what a field blur does is it lets you blur specific parts of the text or specific parts of your image while keeping other parts less blurred. So I'll show you what I mean. So all you want to do is um, click a few places on the image and then click the white circle. And if we drag it all the way around, you can see we can get the front of the image really blurred and the middle and the right all um, unblurred. And this gives you just a bit of greater control and specificity over your blur than something like Gaussian blur. So I'm just gonna play around with this um, until I find something that I think looks nice. Again, like the image behind it, I want the text to be soft, but I still want it to be readable. So nothing too crazy. Um, so I think they're all around about 15 to 20 here, which gives it a nice soft look. Click OK. And we will have our text in place. It's looking nice, um, fitting in with the whole soft gradient aesthetic we've, we've been going for so far. Um, let's duplicate that. So you can press Ctrl J or Command J to duplicate that layer. And on the layer above, let's go filter, blur, motion blur. And let's give it the same amount of blur that our background image has, which is 534 at zero angle. And now let's lower that opacity just a little. Um, so you can see we've got our first layer, which has the field blur, and the layer above it, which has a field blur and then a motion blur with the with a lower opacity. And what that does is just soften the whole thing and makes the text the same kind of motion blur that the background has to give it the uh, the same kind of feeling. So the final step is an optional one, but one that I've used uh, in some pieces, like on here, um, but I don't use it all the time. But let's see what it looks like here. So we want to drag in a photocopy texture, one that I picked up from Texture Fabric. I'll include the link to that in the description. We want to zoom out, Control T, and make sure this fills the entire 
entire canvas like that. And then I want to change our blending mode from normal to lighter, and it's a pretty subtle effect. But what that does is mean the lightest parts of the texture start to show through. So we have some up here, some up here, some up here, and this just gives it a kind of more distressed, kind of retro aged look. Uh, you can play around with um, sort of blending modes, but I've found that lighter and screen are some of the most effective ones. Screen will show a little bit more, but I like the way the lighter is looking here. So once we have that in place, this is basically our image fixed. And from here, all you can do, if you like, is go back and sort of alter things. So if we want, we take a quick look at, we'll hide our image here, the portrait, and we can drag in a, drag in a different image. And we'll see how that looks. Something to bear in mind again, is make sure that our texture and our noise are the top layers and that everything else is below that. So we go on our new image, supply, let's right click, uh, convert it to a smart object and do the same thing we did on our first image. So color dodge and filter, blur, motion blur. Let's lower that blur a little, make sure this image is still pretty clear. So zoom out. Control T to transform it and make sure it fills the canvas. And because this new image had a different background color, it's going to give you a different effect. Um, you can even have both images on top of each other for a kind of much more abstract effect. That might be nice if we, if we turn down the motion blur a little on each of them. You can sort of have two faces and have like a double exposure kind of effect. That's the good thing about this is once you have the process down, it's all about trying out different photos and trying out different colors. Let's try, let's try another. Um, see what images I have. Like I said, the good thing about it is you can try sort of anything you want. Let's try a, let's try another portrait. Here's one that I grabbed from pixels and let's see how this sort of reacts with everything we can go to zoom out and make sure it fills the canvas and change the blending mode to color dodge and go filter blur motion blur Something like this. And this is really nice. I really like, just hide our text for now. I really like the colors that we're getting here. This yellow and blue gives a completely different feel to, to our original coloring. So let's try the yellow and blue. And if you wanted, we can uh, duplicate our gradient map here. Control J, hide the original. And then we can mess around with a new one and sort of try all these different, all these different things. And each one will give you sort of a different feeling. It's a really fun process and, and when you can sort of go as, as far as you want or, or as little as you want. And you can change your blending modes. See, this is all about colors and blending modes. Obviously a lot of these aren't, aren't super useful. That's nice. That's a very interesting look. Try something like that and let's even bring our text back. See how that looks. Good. Move the text a little bit lower. And you can see the possibilities are sort of really, really limitless. This is how it looks with a portrait. I think I prefer our original. Let's bring that back. And let's bring that back. Here's how it looks with a, a different image of the background. This was a photograph, again from Unsplash, that is a stack list. And I just did the same thing, I changed it to a color dodge. I applied the motion blur, and that really gave it a interesting effect and really brought out the kind of abstract 
abstract shapes. Uh, you can try this, this is with a different image. Um, again, the possibilities are sort of unlimited. This is when I used the same kind of blurred text, but I warped it a little. And this kind of looks, this is for more of an album cover look. But again, the possibilities are, are pretty unlimited. So yeah, I hope you found something useful in this video. If you make any gradient art like this, I'd love to see it. So you can tag me in, in it on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that. But yeah, um, thanks a lot for listening.